Ladies and gentlemen, I present you today the shortest map ever. So short that a red balloon enters and exits in under two seconds. And here's the full view of the map just for some perspective of just how small the track is. Pretty much got grass everywhere with track in the middle alongside a little bit of water in case you want to use some boats and tubs. So that being said, the challenge is we're just going to see how long we can survive on a hard standard map. Just how much defense do we need to survive round 3, round 40, any round of this map. Okay, so first things first, I want to try to get Benjamin, so I'll just tank all the lives, and hopefully we can still make it out alive after that ordeal. Okay, so how many lives do we fall to after just three rounds? Uh, looks like about 40 or so. And then after this round, since I can't buy anything, uh, down to 37. Probably could use an ability at some point, but whatever. Okay, how about a boomerang next? This is good because it has the knowledge where if it doesn't use all the pierce, it loops around twice, so it technically acts as, like, a second boomerang. Because one of that Dormagate attack speed was nowhere near enough to, uh, well, catch things balls off cooldown. I think we still lost lives this round, though, so, uh, how about another attack speed upgrade? Okay, we're still leaking lives to Koreans. Okay, how about a third boomerang, then? And we're still leaking. <laughs> oh, yeah, I should mention it, because some people are probably thinking, oh, isn't this one tower really OP? Well, yes, the Spike Factory is probably the easiest way to cheese this map. But since I forgot to disable it, I will just tell you right now, I'm not going to be using Spike Factories. Just to up the stakes a bit. Also, to make it more exciting, because I guess there's nothing really too interesting about watching a permanent spike just plow through 100 rounds. Uh, hell, even on this map, though, I'm pretty sure the moment, like, a ZMG despawns, it'll just eat up the spikes instantly, so... Uh, who's to say that Spike Factories are, uh, would actually be really uh, that cheesy? But don't forget Spike Storms would be OP, because, like, you know, it would all land... All the spikes that would normally land, like, on a track, would just condense into that one spot. Making it way stronger than it should be. So yeah, I guess I can't go for a farm right now. I just gotta keep building up my towers. I guess right now I'm just gonna go for a wall fire. Since I already bought this guy, but we're down 21 lives. We gotta get quickly. But they also nerfed the wall fire so that it doesn't have full uptime unless you go 1 2 0. So I think we might just be dead before getting Ben's life giving. Okay, we got it up. With 16 lives left, I gotta get 1 2 0. There we go. I think there's also a problem that when I end rounds, uh, the wall fire goes away. So if I start a round, I might instantly collect, depending on what the first balloon is. So, uh, yeah, might be a bit sketchy, but I'm gonna try to go for my first farm now. And yes, for the record, this map has pretty much no chance of being, being on chips mode. Mostly because, well, you don't have enough starting cash to be able to survive, well, the first rounds of balloons. And you just saw there. Okay, we got Magic, but I forgot about that. I guess we kept leaking lives every round that. Magic Shield didn't respawn, so I forgot about it for a second. But the thing is, we're still leaking Magic Shield lives, because you see it keeps going away. Okay, yeah, Wall Farm might be a little bit unreliable, so maybe after this next farm, we will build the second thing. I mean, I guess in the same vein as Spike Factory, pretty much anything that can be put on the track will perform very well, which is, I guess, why I went for uh, Wall Farm. And I'll go for the Druid Vines, too. Because I think on single lane maps, those are uh, pretty cracked. Oh, crap, we just dropped that. Wait, 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 hey, did you see that? Yeah, for some reason, Simon is a Wallfire bugs, and it just doesn't drop the entirety of round 21. Yeah, I had a feeling Wallfire was not to be trusted. Should I just sell it then? Take the L on it? Actually, uh, what I could do is I could use the ability, sell this, and get the Vine attack. So now we actually have a road item, but it didn't work. Okay, I'm still leaking, though. Wait, what? Let me play the round, round 22. Right, right, right. The Vine isn't, like, instantly... Killing white balloons. Okay, new plan. I was kind of thinking about going for a balloon trap. So why don't we just build towards that right now and then... Let me just see if I can survive round 22 at the start of it. Five lives, one. One life clutch. I believe that's a one life clutch. Maybe before I lose next round. Yep. Okay, this is going to be a little tougher than I thought. What if I uh, just sell the wall fire and take the L on it? Work on getting balloon trap up. And hope double gun holds the line. Yeah, it shoots pretty fast. Uh, never mind. Okay, how about a crossbow? Because I'm going to go for, uh, round 24 anyways. I need the camo. Attack speed. There we go. And now we got the Ben, uh, giving five last rounds, so... Maybe, uh, hopefully we're out of the woods. Yeah, honestly, I'm probably better off restarting at this point. Because that wall fire just did not work out. Neither really does a druid, but we'll keep it for now, I guess. Although, I kind of wonder if I should sell it now for the boon trap. I, I think so, I think so. Let's do it. Because I'm pretty sure the vines will, like, eat it up or pop some blooms before it actually gets in the trap. Even if it, like, pops it down instantly in front. At least that's my guess. 
I think it's theoretically possible I'll pop a Luna, because you do see it spawn for like a frame or two, so maybe. Honestly, it might not be a bad idea to go back to Wallfire, just to be able to uh, like have something for when Trap is gone. You just saw right there. Things just ran by us. I feel like a mid-game option that wouldn't be too bad though is just D breath, just so I can survive. Because like later on the Wallfire alone is gonna be enough to survive the trap down time. Okay, we have reached round 40, so should we try attack shooter? First off, let me just play and show you how much damage we can do before it exits. Then, ah, oh, 20% damage. Okay, how about Alpha Overdrive? That's fast enough, right? Yes, very fast. We're not out here to do the sweaty boss farming strategies, so that's why my farms look uh, a little bit bad for round 48. But yeah, just enough that we can, I guess, get stuff that we can just stop the balloons with. So I'm thinking, well, just get all the stuns, right? Because not even one of them, I don't think, maybe enough. Like a balloon crush, for example. So yeah, before we actually save up to those good tier fives, we should probably just get some sort of damage that would uh, hold the line. So I guess tax zone would be it. I did define the track area so that attacks aren't super OP. As you can see, they, they can only really go up so high. So some of the bomb attacks might miss, but uh, should be okay. Anyways. Ooh, yeah, that, that mob didn't get Trojan. And we're leaking live, so... That's a sign that I need more defense. We'll, go, we'll buy Peach Raining. And I should probably stop farming to save up from tax zone. If I had to guess, this is like a fifth of the length of the Blonde's map. I could have gone even uh, lower if I wanted to. In fact, I actually did try a previous iteration of this that was like half a second of a Revolute spawning, but uh, I figured that was too brutal, so we had to give our a towers a chance, you know. There's Taxon, by the way. Should be interesting to see when this loses. Probably 63. Okay, so let's see. I'm gonna need something this round, right? Or Taxon actually handle it. Nah, not even close. I wonder if adding one Balloon Crush to the mix will help, or Balloon Impact. Although, I don't know if that was enough Pierce to uh, stun everything. Probably not yet, not even close. Okay, hear me out here, but how about an Arctic Wind with an MIB Village? Although, I don't think I can afford a lot to selling any farms. Let's just see. Yeah, I'm a bit sure. What well, if I just sold the Blue Trap? It's not that useful anymore. And, uh, let's just play. This is 60% slowdown all balloons. And that's still not enough. Okay, I guess how about we just downgrade the first wave, just to see if we can actually beat rainbows. It's only 40 rainbows, yeah, okay, easy. What if I try to snowstorm wave 2, if possible? Wait for it. Uh, now? Okay, that works. And I don't know what for wave 3, but how about more glaives if I can afford it? Come on, give me one more crate. And bend ability too, don't forget. Alpha buff, possible? Okay, there we go, that works. How are we handling BFBs, by the way? Oh, pretty easily at that. Again, tax zone OP. Tax zone is that guy. Okay, I feel like I'm a greedy, so let me just see if I can squeeze out an Ultra Boost before actually going for my Balloon Crush. Just to get the Ultra Boost Central out of the way. Okay, and now we actually have to get this thing. Because I, I think we'll die to ZMG. But I guess we can siphon it. Wait for it, siphon now. There we go. Make it round 80 easy. And there we go. There's our Balloon Crush, and we will no longer die to balloons. But. Again, mobs will still keep aging forward. In fact, I just dropped down to two lives, somehow. So that tells me he's something to destroy ceramics, though. So how about a Ray of Doom? We don't really have a huge amount of farms, but I honestly think we can work with this. And we just need some balloon damage. And then siphon the BFB. Nice. Okay, don't need to sell any farms then. We're chillin'. Don't forget that also, after I get my 10 Ultra Boost stacks, I'll probably Ultra Boost the Bloom Crush, too. The faster I make the Stunning Towers, the... Uh, Better chance we'll have. I'm curious how long this will last though, because something will get through the beam eventually. It's not like an instant kill for ceramics. I think it does like 25 damage each chick. Super ceramics have like, what, 60? So they do have a couple frames to uh, move along. Okay, how about DTs? Can Blue Crush keep up with it? We have two stacks at the moment. Although you can still see, oh, we just lost lives. I'm dead any second. Wait for it. Yeah, there we go. Okay, I think we got a double down on the stuns then, so how about a super glue real quick? Sure, that's gonna be enough for DTs, right? We still lost lives though, so I don't know. Okay, I think we're alive. Nice. Yeah, I did say earlier that uh, road items aren't road spikes or, or spack trees or fair game. So, I mean, we could just go back to balloon trap, or rather uh, the big trap, exit the Zal. If that's a pretty good combo with balloon crush, you just stun the uh, mode to place and then. You just let this guy, like, gobble up the CMGs. I think we'll probably just, like, stack the normal towers first. Uh, the good ones until we, before we actually go for Paragons. 
Anyways, here's 98. No siphoning. Just to see if we can do it. And yeah, I think uh, Big Trap's a little bit broken here. Uh, Fortified TDTs are also fine. Oh, I forgot. Ran 100 exists. And one thing I forgot was I forgot to charge up my uh, first strike ability. Yeah, I don't have Joel to save me. Okay, not gonna lie, I think I'm kind of screwed here. I guess I'll still try. Mobile limbs are instants. It just they need micro, and I have two seconds to basically pop them over with my micro. Guess we also need something to knock things back for when the uh, bad pops to have a mob bomb. Well, let me just show you ability. Come on. Oh, that was close to popping. I think I just go for more towers, then I don't need to rely on as many uh, mobile abilities. So how about uh, Elite Sniper and Chrome Mob 2? And uh, again, it's skill. Come on. Got it. There we go. Okay, that wasn't so bad. I thought we were kind of screwed there, but... Now, I guess two seconds or one and a half is plenty of time. Okay, so what's next on this, boys? Feels like even with uh, all the stuns we have on the field and the ultra boost stacks on the Bloom Crush, things are getting dangerously close to the exits. Yeah, it's just me, or did I just leak, uh... I went from 230 lives to 170, so somehow I'm still leaking only just a ceramic. I don't know how it's possible, but... Yeah, that's what's happening. Once we actually get to building Paragons, I bet stuff like, uh... The Ninja Paragon will really help. Like, the 50% passive slowdown. Huge. Also, I guess I forget in, uh, 8 rounds. Let's, uh, build a couple first strikes. I'm gonna need it. Okay, uh, we're losing more lives on 117. Come on, I got a 10x Bloom Crush. What else do I need? I wonder at what point I should just give in and go for a Paragon. Maybe this round, or... Let me just survive. If I can survive the next two rounds, you know, the round with the bad, then uh, without Paragons, then I'll be satisfied. Again, with a million dollars, you can basically build anything in the world, so how about a Mad just to help out against, I think, DTs are killing us, right? Yeah, we'll overclock the Mad, too. Surely, DDs can't get through this. Refuse to believe it. Okay, there we go. So, uh, without using first strikes, we cannot beat the first bad. Okay, how about Elim and three first strikes? There we go. Okay, so I have one first strike and one Elim ability for the next part, which I'm pretty sure I'm just dead to. Uh, what else could I do? Ultra boost? That's not gonna be enough, though, right? Yeah, we're popping it too slowly. Well, I think it's just time to pull the Paragon. I didn't farm nearly as hard as I probably could have this game, so... Money's uh, well, actually kind of tight. So, let me just go for this first. 320 at least. And maybe we'll see now if I can get away with just one first strike for this round. Okay, that's barely enough, my goodness. So, rinse and repeat. Yeah, I think the sticky... Oh, no, it doesn't even work for this. Second bad. Weird. Okay, I guess we gotta go all in with the mold damage. So, how about an Avatar Wrath 2? Yeah, I just ran out of money here, so... Uh, hopefully, this just works. Please. I'll use two first strikes for this next part. Because I'll use Homeland for the third wave. And I should be good. Yeah, it's activated now. Ultra boost the mad. I need it. I need it. And come on. One more first strike and one bad. Nice. Well, at this point, there's not really much strategy other than just stack bad damage and hope for the best. So I've got a million dollars to spare, I guess, for round 140. See what I want to do for that round. There's no way we're going to beat it because I still have the same defense from uh, 20 rounds ago. And four first strikes clearly doesn't do enough. Let me just show you. Yeah, we only got 20% of the damage done. I think we might have just reached dead end here, but let me just see if an Ace Paragon can save us. I think with two seconds to work with, though, we pretty much just have to have the Doom Ship be in the right place at the right time. With the Greases, by the way. 21. Because, yeah, remember the forward-facing darts do the most amount of my damage. Let me wait for it to be on top of the track. Like, uh... I'm waiting to see what it will do on Wing Monkey. Okay, now. Go, 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 go. No, that's not... 9,000 damage only, jeez. Okay, I think a Ventral Tumble will do more than 9,000 damage, but even then, it's still pretty bleak. It does help that we do get buffs too, but yeah, I don't know. Actually, Ventral's too expensive, and I'll probably just use the Temple for the buff anyway, so never mind. We'll just leave it at that. And I don't know, let me just try again, I guess. So, Homeland for four first strikes. Now? Come on. Wait, we actually are very close to popping it. 25,000 damage this time. Wait, a Ventral actually would have made a difference, I think. So, if I'm gonna go for Vengeful, I'm gonna need to sell a hefty chunk of my defense. Guess I really should have farmed harder. But oh well. Well, that's all my money, so this better work. 3, 2, 1, and again. 4 for strikes. Elim. Nice, we did it. So, it is indeed possible. Now, there is still a bad after this, and I have no first strikes left, so... 
let's see how we can get out of this. Uh, we'll overclock the eventual, of course. And let's see if Homeland's still up, actually. Do I need it again? Oh, don't tell me I have to uh, redo this round and rebuy Homeland. Yeah, this next bat just does not want to spawn in. Okay, we actually have the whole cooldown up again, so... Okay, we're fine. Yeah, as you can see there, um, Vengefuls are just way better than Paragons against bats. Which shouldn't be a surprise. I just keep forgetting about the fact that, uh, Paragons really aren't that great against bats because... You mostly just see it being really OP against bosses because they have extra inherent boss damage to them. But yeah, if we're just talking about raw free play damage on top of the fact that you can, you know, well, give the tower buffs, then yeah. Ventral comes out ahead by a lot. Even then, you can still see it's really scary against normal bads. They're getting pretty far. I wish this was a normal game, not gonna lie, just so I could keep uptime on all my abilities here. Don't have any tech bots enabled. Because yeah, you see without abilities, uh, yeah, the bads just run through and it's only 150. Well, nothing stopped me from using first strikes against to bail myself out, so how about a couple over there? There's really not much else to see from this point on, so uh, that'll do it, I guess. Hope you enjoyed the funny me map showcase. And if you have any other ideas for, like, what kind of crazy maps I can make, then let me know, then maybe we can cook it up. That's it, see you next time.